Hello, my awesome friends, project managers, PMPs. Welcome to WPMD. What should the PM do? This is a game show where I test and quiz you for the PMP exam. So right off the bat, I am going to be asking you some questions that have just two options, but I'm going to give you 15 seconds. Here's the logic. I read the question. That's almost already 30 seconds. And then I give you an additional 15 seconds. They're just two options. So you don't need the full one minute, 15 seconds like you get on the PMP exam. Are you ready? Well, here is your very first question. Stakeholders frequently request changes to the project, impact in development and delivery. What should the Agile project manager do? Is it A, engage the stakeholder to understand the reasons, implement a change control process? Is it B, implement a loose change control framework while adhering to the schedule? What do you think? I'll give you some time to think about it. All right. You'll notice that a lot of these questions are feel-good questions for those of you who are quite advanced. And the reason is we have all sorts of folks getting ready for the test. Some have just started. So the answer to this, my friends, is option A. That's right. It's option A. And let's find out why it's option A. The rationale is this. Engaging with stakeholders to understand reasons and implementing a change control process are necessary for managing project changes effectively. If you take a look at the options, it says implement a loose change control framework while adhering to the schedule. Well, this doesn't make sense. We're having frequent requests to changes and it's impacting development and delivery. So we cannot have a loosey-goosey framework. We need a framework that is more solid and intentional. So we need to implement a change control process that is not loose. All right, let's move on to our next question for today. The Agile team consistently overcommits to the amount of work they can complete in a sprint. What should the Agile project manager do? Is it A, conduct a retrospective and adjust the sprint backlog, ensure realistic commitments based on velocity? Is it B, work with the team in building a realistic schedule with associated cost and scope for a fixed, finite piece of work across the project? What do you think? I'll give you some time to think about it. All right, my friends, you did read from this question that you are in the world of Agile. It's an Agile team. And for that reason, the best answer I would have been expecting from you is A, conducting a retrospective, adjusting the backlog, and ensuring realistic commitments based on velocity are crucial for improving team planning. If you take a look at option B, it says finite piece of work across the project. This is not the mentality for the work of Agile. It's talking about a finite scope, but we know that in the world of Agile, scope is flexible, and that's what shut down option B. Let's move on to the next one. The Agile team lacks sufficient training in Agile methodologies impacting their efficiency. What should the Agile project manager do? Is it A, boost the level of training in hybrid and predictive methods so skills will improve over time? Is it B, identify training needs and provide agile training or coaching? What do you think? I'll give you time to think about it. All right, my friends, I believe your time is up for this one. Taking a look at A, it states 
hybrid and predictive methods. Nothing to do with agile. Did you catch that? Well, that was a trick. The best answer here is B. The rationale is identifying and addressing training needs by providing agile training or coaching is essential for enhancing team skills. Here's your next question. The agile team experiences inconsistent velocity in different sprints. What should the agile project manager do? Is it A, analyze reasons for fluctuations and adjust planning based on consistent velocity? Is it B, add additional team members to the project to improve velocity for the longer sprints? What should the project manager do? I'll give you some time. Think about it. All right, my friends, I believe your time is up. Taking a look at this from an agile lens, the best answer is A. The rationale is analyzing reasons for velocity fluctuations and adjusting planning based on consistent velocity are crucial for reliable project forecasting. It's important that you look across your velocities. One sprint may be different from another, but when you look at an average of sprints that have been recent for the velocity, you get a better idea. So you do need to adjust. B says add additional team members. Well, what if you already capped at 10? Are you going to add more than that? How many more than that would you add to artificially improve velocity? That doesn't even make sense. So the idea in the world of agility is we tend to look between three and nine. Scrum Guide makes an exception of 10, but we definitely don't want to be adding 20, 30, 40 people to an endeavor from an agile lens. Not only does it mess up the velocity, it's artificial because when those folks leave, you're back to the basement and you're trying to catch up. Remember, it's not a velocity game. The world of agility is not so hyper-focused on velocity, like it's a drug. No, we use velocity for the understanding of cadence. And remember what it says, you should maintain a constant pace indefinitely in the Agile Manifesto. I hope that makes sense. Velocity is a touchy one. Let's move on to the next one. User stories are poorly defined, leading to misunderstandings and delays in development. What should the Agile project manager do? Is it A, refine user stories with stakeholders and ensure they meet invest criteria? Is it B, work on the story writing process with the team during the retrospective and ensure they meet the definition of done? What do you think? I'll give you some time to think about it. All right, friends, I believe our time is up. What did you choose? If you chose option B, it is incorrect. The answer is A. The rationale is this, refining user stories with stakeholders and ensuring they meet the invest criteria are necessary for clear and effective development. Now we're not saying that the invest criteria is the only way you could do this. But INVEST stands for independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small enough to fit within a sprint, and testable. And we want user stories to meet that criteria. That is a vanilla flavored look at the definition of ready. If you take a look at the question, it is tricky in that it sneaks in the definition of not ready, done. That is a whole different thing. The definition of done pertains to your overall increment, your potentially shippable increment. That is what the definition of done pertains to. Now, the definition of done as part of it could have that all the stories have met the acceptance criteria. But when it comes to the invest criteria, we're talking about the readiness of the stories to be worked on. 
So if your stories are poorly defined, what you need to look at is your definition of ready. Now, there are a lot of agile zealots in the world today who say the definition of ready is a poor choice of what to do. It serves as a gate, but that's debatable. And I don't even want to go down that alley. So let's go to our next question. Final question for today, my friends. The agile team lacks self-organization, leading to dependency on the project manager for decisions. What should the project manager do? Is it A, promote cross-team discussions across the project management office and self-organization will naturally develop? Is it B, foster trust and empowerment, provide tools and training for self-organization? Which one would you choose? I'll give you time to think about it. All right, my friends, it is time for the big reveal of this one. The best answer here, if you chose option B, you are correct. Fostering trust, empowerment, and providing tools and training for self-organization are key for enhancing the team's ability to make decisions independently. It's all about that trust thing. Now let's take a look at A. Promote cross-team. What do you mean by cross-team? Cross-team means across different teams. So it starts off on a bad footing because it's not talking about the agile team itself. It's talking about other teams. So the rest of it is what under the bridge, even though it says discussions across the project management office. Wait, wait, wait. This is agile. Why are we talking PMO? And self-organization will naturally develop as we talk to other teams across the PMO. Come on now. That ain't right. That's bogus. And this is what makes the exam tricky. Don't be moved by the bells and whistles and the shiny object syndromes that the PMI will throw in there. It's to test your loyalty. So if you're looking in an agile environment and it's saying, do this to other teams and you just know that's a red herring. And this is what makes the exam a little bit tricky. But for those of you veterans who've been working, you know, and when I say veterans, I mean, you've gone through PMBOK 7 and Agile Practice Guide, you probably found those quite easy, I hope. <laughs> for those of you that are looking for training, coaching, mentoring and help, you're looking for a trainer and coach who truly knows this stuff to lead you through the crazy trajectory of the PMP exam. I wanted to remind you, I have training, coaching, and help at hpmexam.com. Not only do I prepare you for the PMP exam, but I also prepare you for life after the PMP exam, after you get certified. So this is your one-stop program for you to learn how to succeed as a project manager in business, and in life. I am going to be teaching a curriculum after you get certified. You want to be in that curriculum. And everything you need to know is at hpmexam.com. But I have a class on Saturday. So you want to jump in this Saturday and sign up. The first available Saturday that you find seats available, jump into the program, and let's help you succeed on your PMP exam. Well, that's not all. I have other questions to ask you. For those of you who have been studying deep, you know that there are many moving parts on this exam. Not only do you have the 49 processes, you have the five process groups, the 10 knowledge areas, and you have the PMBOK 7 principles. Today, I'm going to quiz you just a little bit on the processes. Okay? I'm going to give you a process. And I'm going to ask you what happens before and after in that knowledge area. Are you ready? All right. You have just developed the schedule. What happened before that and what should happen after that? I'm looking in total for five things. Four things that happen before you develop the schedule and one thing that happens after. D. 
Did you get anything out of the five? Let's see. The first thing you do in scheduling is you plan how to run the whole schedule development process. So we call it plan schedule management. The next thing you should do is you define the activities. Think about the activities like a laundry list of things to do. Then you sequence the activities. You put them in logical order of occurrence. And then you estimate the activity durations. And when you put all those together, then you have the developed schedule process. And after you've developed the schedule, you shouldn't just put it on the wall. Like one of my managers said, Phil, put the schedule on the wall. That stakeholder wanted a schedule. Uh, no, <laughs> you can put it on the wall, but don't forget to control the schedule. Okay, so those are the six things in schedule management. I have a couple more for you. This is a very simple one. You have just completed a quality audit. What should you have done before and what should you do after? It's a very simple one. So when you are running a quality audit, what process are you in? You're in managed quality. Before managed quality comes plan quality management. And after managing quality or quality audits should come the control quality. Now, this stuff is not tested on your exam like this, but having a robust assortment of understanding and knowledge and vocabulary, trust me, it is going to help your exam game because I don't know what those crazy examiners have cooked for you. You want to make sure you got the right teeth to bite that exam. <laughs> bite the exam where it hurts. Because I tell you, if you don't, don't bite the exam, it's going to bite you. It's going to eat you for lunch. And you don't want that to happen. All right. So we've talked about plan quality management, manage quality, and control quality. You ready for one more? Okay. Let's assume you're a project manager and you have just concluded giving feedback to your team, having a one-on-one -on -one and helping them see the trajectory forward on the project. What should you do next and what should you have done before that? Do you know which knowledge area I'm talking about? I'm talking about the resource management knowledge area. Now, I know that the PMBOK Guide 7th edition has been touted as a go-to book for the exam, and it is quite all right. It's one of the books, but it does not help you with a clear understanding of the knowledge areas of project management. And that's why I decided to add this as a second component to our game show, because I want you to truly understand project management and be able to teach it to others, to be quite honest, if you don't have the structure that the PMI has provided in the sixth edition or in process groups or practice guide, it becomes very hard to teach project management to a newbie. And it's sad because a lot of people are getting certified and they're blowing past the knowledge areas and the process groups. Don't do that. You got to know the holy grail of the PMI, which is why they wrote process groups or practice guide. All right. Have you answered the question yet? Okay. What happened before that thing I mentioned about feedback and one-on-ones? That thing is called manage team. Manage team is really just code for lead a team. It's really about giving feedback and helping the team see the way forward and guiding them through the process from a structural standpoint and also from a leadership standpoint. So manage team doesn't actually do the process justice. Because not only are you managing the team from a structural perspective, you are actually leading the team through feedback and guidance. You're taking a look at any results that came from the training they went for, from tests, exams, and you're giving them feedback or any assessments. You know, we talk about team performance assessments. Well, this is where you, as the leader, take a look at the assessments and give either the entire team or individuals on the team guidance about what to do next, the way forward. So what you should have done before manage team is you should have planned resource management. That's number one. You should have estimated activity resources. That's two. Then you should have acquired resources, human equipment, 
material supplies and facilities. And then you should have developed the team, okay? And after you've developed the team, that's where managed team comes in. And the final thing that happens is you control resources. But remember, it's not about the physical. Uh, it's not about the human resources. It is about the physical in this case. So when you take a look at plan, resource management, estimate activity resources, acquire resources, those pertain to the human and the physical. But when it comes to develop team, well, of course, that excludes the physical resources. Then manage team, that also excludes the physical resources. But control resources is all about ensuring that those physical resources were available and used as proposed, okay? So if all of that made sense to you, you on a good footing. And again, for those of you who feel a little bit lost with all this terminology and jargon, you need to go on down to hpmexam.com for my next boot camp, where I'm going to be breaking down the 35 tasks, the knowledge areas, the process groups, the domains, the whole kit and caboodle. I am going to be throwing it out for you. You're also going to get access to a lifetime course, not only for the PMP, but also life after the PMP exam is a crazy steal. Check it out, hpmexam.com. Thank you so much for joining me today, my friends. Until next time, stay great.